Folks, while you and I are all out there doing our best through the daily grind to make as much money as possible in as little time as possible, wouldn't it be fantastic is after you work all day and it's time to go to bed, you go to sleep, but your money's able to keep making more money for you? Well, guess what? That can happen if you line up with the right people. We're talking financial planning today here on All In with Brian Weatherford. And you can't talk financial planning without a real live certified financial planner you're in luck. We just happen to have one right here with us today. His name is Scott Hamilton. His company, oddly enough, Hamilton Financial Planning. Scott, welcome to the show today, sir. Good to see you. Ryan, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you for being here. And I want to I want to back up a little bit, maybe uh, 30 years ago or close to it. You spent 20 years, like so many people in corporate America, out there doing the right thing, that Monday through Friday, nine to five grind, rolling right along, all of a sudden that ended. You could have done anything. You chose to get into financial planning. So where were you? Why did it end? And how in the heck did you get into financial planning? Yeah, thanks. I um, I started my career with Exxon doing uh, financial systems. And then I went got a master's in MBA and then uh, ended up at Dell. And after 20 years uh, between the two companies and with IT uh, consulting in the middle, uh, the Great Recession hit, and I kind of moved along in my career, went got a, my uh, certified financial planner certificate, and opened up this planning shop. And I've been doing this for now solid for 10 years. I've done 250 financial plans for mostly retirees and baby boomers. And what we do is we help them align their vision, values, and goals into a comprehensive financial plan and then we model the investments to align their risk, their value, their risk tolerance, risk capacity. And then we manage the investments. So way back when you started your corporate career, and I've been there too, let me tell you, and, and the, the corporation would set me up to talk with a financial planner. But let's face it, a lot of us are just young and dumb in those days. I didn't align myself with a financial planner way back then. Were you smart enough to do so or did you not? And that's why you realize even more the importance of doing it. I did not, and uh, I have clients that have in the past when they're in their 30s, maybe, and maybe they have twins, d double income coming in, and I'm envious of these people. It's a wise decision. I, I can, if I emphasize one thing today, it'd be that I think everybody should have a comprehensive financial plan. It's, uh, it, it's kind of like having a roadmap to where you want to go. It, it, really, it really, really is very beneficial. You know, one of the things I was thinking about, and actually I've thought about this, but when I saw your notes today, it really got me thinking about it. And that's this. Is there such thing as a pension anymore? You know, you hear that was a big deal with our grandparents or maybe our parents, but are pensions still a thing these days or not? Yeah, we've moved away from the defined benefit pensions of the old. And I still run across some, but the percentage is really declining now. The pensions are you know, we've shifted to the 401ks uh, where people are, are, you're on your own for your savings. So you've got to figure out how much you're going to save, how you're going to invest it, what percent of your assets you, you know, you spend now versus save for your future. And it's a hard decision unless you have a comprehensive financial plan to make that hard decision. Maybe what I'll do is save 10% now, 15% next year, maybe 17 or 20 the year after. If you can do that, it can make a tremendous difference in the quality of your retirement. And remember, life expectancies are growing over, over the decades. So we might be living longer in the future than we have in our past, right? So that's something to think about. Well, the other thing to think about that, sadly enough, but it, it's, just, it's just blatantly the truth. There's a big fear for a lot of us that we're going to outlive our money. Nobody wants to do that. And that has to be a great sense of pride for you to when you can get people in a position to where no sweat, your life expectancy can just keep on going because we've got you lined up. You're not going to outlive your money. You're not going to be a burden on your loved ones. Does that give you a, a pretty good feeling when you're able to pull that off for people? That's ultimately it gets down to when the, the benefit I derive from this is helping people retire. And to have that, when you move from uh, you know, 40 years of a working career, and then one day you're retired and you switch from earnings accumulations to, uh, to spending, it is a massive mind shift. And if you don't have that peace of mind to know that we can handle medical conditions, inflation, Social Security getting cut back, whatever are, you know, ups and, ups and downs in the market, if you don't have that 
uh, modeled out. And if you're not completely comfortable that you have a plan to withstand that, it's nerve wracking. But once you build a financial plan, it's comprehensive. You make sure your model, your investment model aligns with your goals and values. And then you stick with your financial plan, your investment strategy, and not react as the market ups and downs. It, it increases your chance of success and it gives you peace of mind, allows you to spend time with your family and friends. Well, and it gives you that quality of life that we all crave and we want for our, for ourselves and for our loved ones. Uh, one thing that's comforting to know sometimes, as sad as it is, is when we can sit down and we realize we're not the only one that makes mistakes when it comes to our finances. Uh, for example, uh, or maybe give us some example. Are there some, some common behavior finance traps that people fall in that we all do that maybe we can avoid with a little help? Yeah, exactly. There's a big difference between in the average investor and then investor return and investment return. And the reason why is because the, the investment return, say the S&P 500, it, it, you know, it's just the average index that you see on the news every night. It's going to return a, a, some number. But if an individual attempts to match that, generally they're up against human behavior. It's, uh, you know, you buy high, you, you know, you want to sell, you, you fear of missing out, it's greed. Don't forget about taxes, commissions. All these traps that will cause you to have less than optimal returns. The best strategy is just to simply to have a plan and stick with your plan. Is it safe to say, Scott, when you're starting off with people, and I hope that you have some 20-year-olds that are smart enough to, to, to get on board with you, but are things different for uh, investment opportunities from 20-year-old to 30-year-old to 60-year-olds like myself? Do, th do things change as people get older and get closer to that mystical retirement date? Yeah, it sure, sure does. A minor change in the early years can have a massive uh, impact down the road. So if you're saving 10%, of your salary and you move it to 15%, that's a big change if you're in your 20s or 30s. If you wait till your you know, next door to retirement and you start making changes, your options are somewhat limited. You can spend less, work longer, but it's it, you, you have your range of options are so much more powerful the younger you are. And it's the magic of compounded interest. If you simply can Save more, spend less in the early years. Save for your retirement because nobody else is. It's your responsibility. So that's that's important. Earlier, the better. Well, and it is part of our responsibility, even regardless of our age. But a big part of our responsibility is to realize we can't handle this ourselves. I mean, we can, but not the way a pro like yourself can. I mean, you, you've been doing this. Well, what do you say, 250 people? Is that the number you had a while ago? Yeah, exactly. You, you've done this. Well, I'm going to do it once for this guy and I don't have a clue what I'm doing. So it's very important for people to be responsible with that. I've got about a minute left, but real quickly regarding the planning process of this whole thing. I mean, how do you work with people? I mean, it's visually, it's virtual. What, what, what are you doing to keep people up to speed with what's going on? So currently and also in the past, I've been virtual and it's uh, remote and paperless. And I've been that way for years. Generally, we used to have one financial meeting up front, just the get acquainted meeting, but now that's turned into Zoom meetings, which we're all becoming so comfortable with. And Zoom actually is a wonderful tool for financial planning. It allows us to meet face to face, and then I can switch the screen, and we can do the we do the planning process. It's virtual, it's real time, and it's comprehensive. And it allows us to go through, you know, insurance, taxes, estate. Uh, the savings rate, the drawdown plan, and it's uh, it's a very visual process. It's it's we can practice different scenarios, see what works, what doesn't work. So it's a good story. Well, it's a great story. It's nice to hear somebody that's been using Zoom long before it became so popular and trendy. Scott Hamilton's one of those guys. He's he's done it all a long time, and he probably set where you might be right now in the corporate world. He can absolutely help you get through that and help you get to the end of life where we all want to be outliving our money and having a great quality of life. Scott Hamilton, thanks for coming all in with us today. Continued success for you and your clients. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.